Uh, so this question is about beat. Uh, it says piano tuner hears a beat, and it's both uh, uh, what, what do they call it onomatopoeia, or it's a word that kind of sounds like a, what it is. Well, I guess it's not technically onomatopoeia, but when we say the word beat, um, it's referring to a wave interference phenomenon, and the and the striking aspect of that is that you hear a periodic thing. So that's why it's called a beat, and that's why it's uh, describing a beat every two seconds. So what it's describing here is a beat frequency of, um, of uh, half hertz, 0 0.5 hertz. So that it's uh, every uh, two seconds, the piano tuner hears some kind of um, something that's like an oscillation. And I have a in lecture that uh, demonstrates a bit, but let me just uh, uh, briefly here show you the bit here. And I think I, we can even do this semi-numerically if we wanted it to. So um, let me bring up this software that I can use to do a bunch of things. Uh, one of which is I can generate a tone. So uh, the piano tuner has a, 262 tuning fork, okay. I can simulate that tuning fork by um, generate on um, 262. Um, let me make the amplitude relatively small so that it's not so loud. Uh, five minutes, that seems unreasonably long. Let me make it 20 seconds. All right, uh, let me change my share setting so that I'm sharing my uh, computer sound. I think, yeah, so when I play this tone, you should be able to hear it, hopefully correctly. So that's a 262 hertz tune. Uh, the, 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 I guess it doesn't sound like a tuning fork. A tuning fork could have slightly more pleasant sound than this pure sinusoidal wave. Now, you know, pure sinusoidal wave. Now the question is, so this is being used to, to tune the piano string. So, um, so what the question is describing is that the piano tuner hears a beat. Let me demonstrate. Um, what that'll sound like. So tuning fork is at this frequency that I set, and the piano string is at some different frequency that um, that's uh, close to 262 hertz, but not quite. Let me demonstrate. So if I generate a second tone with, uh, let me make it 261 hertz. Oops, that just overwrote. Um, let me do it this way. Track, add a new mono track. Okay, uh, and let me generate it here. Uh, okay, so if I zoom in, you can see that they are two different uh, tones, or um, and they have slightly different frequency. You can see that uh, over time they kind of go out of sync. Anyways, um, so let me just uh, play it so that you can hear what it sounds like. You hear that wobbling sound, and that wobbling sound is what's referred to as beat. And um, and so this is one way you can hear it. So this, uh, this when I generated this frequency here, it I generated as a, at a frequency lower than the um, than the origin the tuning fork frequency. I could also generate it higher, one hertz higher than the tuning fork frequency. And when I do, I'm going to trust that it's all been replaced properly. Um, when I play it, this is what you will hear. Again, that bit. And you might not quite hear any difference at all, as in the, as in the, um, both uh, when I had a 261 hertz and when I had a 263 hertz, the beat kind of sounds the same, and and that's what this uh, a question is getting at. 
the string could be at two possible frequencies, one that's lower and one that's higher. And as you're listening, your ear won't really be able to tell the difference. Um, so the, what a tuner can do is um, the, pian the tuner can uh, change the parameters. So uh, as, uh, as the tuner tightens the string, you expect the frequency to go up. So here, I, the way I can <laughs> simulate that here is by generating a tone that is higher, not 263 hertz, or, but 264 hertz. And as I make the frequency of the tone higher, if I hear that beat frequency has increased, then that tells me that uh, my, uh, my tuning frequency is moving away from that um, up to 62 hertz tuning fork frequency. So um, on the other hand, if this was at a lower frequency, like 260 hertz, and as I uh, play that string, I hear something. And then as I tune the string, as I tighten it, if I hear that the, the beat frequency is decreasing, as you will hear, then that decreasing bit frequency tells me that I'm getting closer to the frequency that I'm comparing to. So, so far, uh, as you are hearing, um, this is like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. This is about one hertz. And it's actually illustrating the formula, which uh, formula for the bit frequency. The bit frequency is the difference between the two frequencies that you are um, uh, comparing, that you are adding together by playing it at the same time, that difference gives you the bit frequency. And I think in the lecture I go over that. So here, uh, let's uh, um, generate the ones that will give me the right answer. So the bit frequency is 0 0.5 hertz. So the frequency difference here must be 0 0.5 hertz. So one of the possible frequencies will be 261.5. And let's see, hear it. Yeah, it takes about two seconds between the, I guess, peaks of that. Uh, I'm kind of watching the amplitude. So the lower possible frequency would be 261.5. And the, the higher uh, possible frequency is 262.5 hertz. Uh, simple answer. <laughs> oh, let me demonstrate while I have this here that if I replace this uh, tune with 262.5, that, that also gives me the same bit frequency. So 262.5, let's play it. Increase in sound amplitude every two seconds. So, so that's it. Um, that's uh, this question. Let's uh, look at the next question. <laughs> um, it says uh, two tuning forks having frequencies 460 and 464 hertz are struck simultaneously. What average frequency will you hear? Um, okay, that. Uh, is it a trick question? Average of those two numbers is 462. So that's probably right. There is a trick here in that um, bit frequency. Um, if you look at the mathematical description of the bit, which I lecture on, um, we take the difference and then divide by 2. So you might think that's what you saw here. But if you answer that, then it will be wrong. Um, bit frequency, as I was saying in another question, it's just the difference between the two um, frequencies. And I guess the thing that might confuse some people is that what was the factor of two in the derivation of the bit phenomena? I think I can explain that with the audacity here. So let me just generate those two frequencies that are talked about. Um, I can generate tone here, make it 460. And let me mute this and play it so that you can hear what it sounds like. Very annoying sign tone. <laughs> okay, and uh, let me generate the other tone. 
four sixty four hertz. And again, play this by itself. And as you hear it, um, at least I can't really tell the difference between these two. Some people might be able to, I can't. Now, if you play them both at the same time, that's when you hear beat. Sound. And here the beat frequency is uh, 4 hertz, uh, 4 times every second. Now, I, I think if we uh, mix and render um, these two, as in let, let uh, Audacity do the math, and just to, so add these two waves so that you see what the effect of interference uh, looks like, the effect of superpositional wave interference. So I'm going to do, um, is it under tracks? Um, ah, yeah, mix and render. Let's say mix and render to a new track. So this is the uh, this is the result of adding these two together. Let me, uh, yeah. So this is where you can see that uh, it's uh, the amplitude of the wave varies over time. So as you look at this. Um, I hope you see this, uh, um, you get some feeling for this uh, envelope thing, that this uh, envelope looking thing is what's uh, illustrating the time varying amplitude, because it starts out as some, well, there's a point at which where there's zero amplitude, the two waves destructively interfere, and there's at a brief moment, your amplitude is zero. And over time, amplitude increases to do this, and then decreases back down, and then, and then increases again, and so on. And what we hear as bit frequency, and what's also defined as bit frequency, is the the reciprocal of the period from one point where you had the zero amplitude to another point where you had the zero amplitude, or you can do it a peak to peak from here to here. Now. The, this envelope shape, it's a result of a product of two trig functions. Um, so if I were to kind of setting this as t equals zero, if I set this, then um, what this uh, is, is uh, mathematically this function, um, I don't know, a as a function of time is uh, some amplitude a naught times, um, and there's the carrier wave, which uh, let me just call it cosine. It could be cosine, sine, doesn't matter. Sine of omega carrier times t. And this is a, and the, the envelope shaped thing, it's going to be described by sine of something times t. And this is where you have to be careful. Uh, defining the Defining this as the bit period, so saying omega bit is equal to, uh, I don't know, I think that's 2 pi over period of bit. If you simply said this sine, sine function is sine of omega bit, uh, let me actually do this in different color. If you said that this is sine of omega bit, times t, you, you will see that, oh, that's not what I get at all, because a uh, sine function having this as a period doesn't look like this. It looks like this. This is the one complete period of a sine wave. It, it, it returns to zero value uh, midway between the, uh, it, at half a period. This is where the phase is pi. So, so this is where the factor of two comes from, because the overall shape you get of the interference pattern is the product of these two uh, trig functions. When the way we measure bit period is not the same way we would measure the period of this envelope function, because it, it returns to zero at halfway between in a full period. So, so that's where um, 
so that's where the factor of two, two comes in. This sinusoidal function has to be defined so that the quantity here is omega bit times or no half half of omega bit omega bit divided by two. So that um, this sinusoidal function, when you sketch it out, it looks like an uh, envelope. It traces out the top half of the envelope here in the first half of the period, and then it traces out the lower half of this envelope in the second half of the period. And for the purpose of this um, amplitude modulation, the, whether this is positive or negative doesn't affect, because this is this is oscillating between plus and minus so much more quickly. So, so that's a, uh, that factor of two that some people could <laughs> get tricked, confused by, because that factor of two does appear in when you are working out the mathematics of a bit phenomenon. But uh, in terms of how we define bit frequency, we define it in a natural way, the frequency that you would actually hear as bit. So four is correct there.